Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Jenny. I'm from Jenny Card Designs. Thanks so much for stopping by to spend some time with me here today. My YouTube channel contains content that is intended to share paper crafting, tutorials, and inspiration with all of you. I hope that you enjoy. Today I'm going to be playing around with some Distress Oxide inks and some mini domed ink blending foams. So these are brand new to me. I literally got these in the mail today from my favorite crafty store, the Scrap of Paradise. This is a Canadian craft store located in Kingston, Ontario. I will link in the description down below their website. There are some amazing people at this store. The owner, Sarah, is a wonderful lady, super generous and kind, and I love shopping at her store. So um, just a disclaimer, Sarah did not send these to me. I purchased these with my own money because, of course, I wanted to jump on the domed ink blending foam bandwagon. Okay, so um, I bought enough to do all of my oxide inks. If you've watched my videos before, you'll notice that I had put Velcro on the tops of my Distress Oxide inks. I found that if I placed the foam on top of my Distress Pad, and when I slide it into my ink pad holder, I didn't get a mess of uh, ink on the bottom of my shelf. So this way there was enough space in between my shelf to slide this in and not make a dirty shelf. Does that make sense? Because I know like you can put it underneath and I did try that, but I found that every time I put my ink pad away, I was getting ink on the bottom. And then when I brought it to my work surface, I had ink all over my hands and stuff. So I just completely avoid that by putting it on top. So if you're wondering, that's why I had done that. So now I have a new ink pad storage and I'll show that to you. Um, I'll just stick it on screen. This new ink pad storage that I've had built by my brother-in-law who does amazing work at Trail West Custom Designs. I will also link to that website. Um, they do amazing work with wood and a laser. Uh, there's just unbelievable amounts of things that he can do. And he made this custom built Distress Oxide ink pad for me where it could hold my blenders and my Distress inks um, beside each other. Now I don't have a full set of blender tools. I have, seem to be having trouble finding more of these. So I'm looking into having a set of handles 3D printed. So more on that later as they come in, but for now I have 10 handles and I've gone ahead and opened up a new package of my ink blending foams and I'm going to test them out with some oxide inks and I'm going to let you know whether I like this or this better. Now obviously um, if you've watched any new crafty sorts of videos, um, everyone is loving these new ink domes. So let's try them out and see how it goes for us today. So I've got a couple of things. I have three colors of Distress Oxide ink. I have Mowed Lawn. I've got Peacock Feathers and Salty Ocean. And then I also have a paper trimmer and I've got a sheet of Nina Classic Crest Solar White. This is the 110 pound cardstock. And then I also have a silicone craft mat. This originally was a baking mat that I bought from Amazon and it was so big, I was able to cut it into four craft sheets and I like to use that when I get messy. So we'll start by cutting up the cardstock. I'm gonna cut this down into four panels. So I'll start across the 11 inch side and cut it five and a half inches. And then I'll put my two pieces together and I will cut on the eight and a half inch side at four and a quarter. This will give us four sheets of cardstock that measure four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm going to use my silicone baking mat and I have to open up this color. I haven't used that yet. Now I don't have all of the Distress Oxide inks. I have the colors that I love the most and I think I've got about 50 or so total, something along those lines. I'm gonna start with Salty Ocean. Oh, look at that. Nice, juicy, brand new ink pad and a plain dome that has never been used yet. So let's ink this up. 
and see what happens. So starting off onto the silicone craft mat in a circular motion, I'm going to apply this ink. That is really nice. That goes on nice and smooth. Wowzer, holy. I think maybe because this ink pad is probably because it's nice and juicy. Wow, that's amazing. I just really love that color. That color is stunning. Okay, next we'll use peacock feathers. And I'll ink up my dome nice and good. I don't know why I call it a dome. I'll ink up my dome foam. <laughs> Ooh, I always love peacock feathers and distress inks together. I'd never seen what the oxide inks look like together, but I love it just as much, I think. Wow, that's so pretty. Now, if you know anything about oxide inks, you know that you can blend over top of them to get a nice smooth transition and that they're also reactive with water. So that's something that's really cool about oxide ink. Super cool. All right, we're gonna go in there with the third color. I've got mowed lawn and grab a new blending foam and we'll ink this up nice and good. And, ooh, very nice. I love those two colors together. Really pretty. I'm gonna grab a post-it note because I keep wanting to stick my fingers on the cardstock and I don't wanna make any smudges. So I'm gonna grab a post-it note and I'll be right back. Okay, so the post-it note, what that's gonna do is kind of stick to my hand and it's gonna give me a spot where I can rest my fingers on the cardstock and continue to ink blend without interfering with the oxide ink and putting paper smudges into it. So let's get this blended in nicely. Oh, that looks so pretty. I'm gonna have to go back over with the peacock feathers because these colors, I think I need to bring the um, salty ocean down a bit more and peacock feathers into this mowed lawn a bit more. I don't know if I'm making sense. In my head it makes sense, but sometimes when I try to, when I try to talk out loud, it just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Super pretty. And last one, we'll go with the Salty Ocean. And I'm gonna bring that just a little bit farther down into the peacock feathers. Wow. That looks amazing. I love this. Super pretty. I really like those blending foams. I don't think it's anything super spectacular, but I just, I like that they don't catch or sort of fold over like how the little uh, flat ones used to do. They would catch on the side of the cardstock or, I like how this is a nice smooth edge and makes for a nice blend. Okay, that looks super good. I really, really love that. Okay, so we'll set that aside, and I'm gonna make a couple of cards. I'm gonna do one more blend of inks, and then grab some new colors and clean off my craft mat, and we'll try something else. So my next color combination, I'm going to use dried marigold, picked raspberry, and abandoned coral. So the dried marigold I have yet to use. I've never used this color before. And picked raspberry and abandoned coral I have. Okay, start with the lightest color, the dried marigold. Ooh, that's pretty. That's such a, that's like a really nice peachy color. I think that's gonna blend really nicely into the abandoned coral. 
Very nice. Okay, next color, we'll use the Abandoned Coral. And for each color that I'm using, I'm getting a new blender brush. My intention is to have one brush for all of my colors of Distress Oxide ink. So once the foam is on there, that's where it's gonna stay. And it's gonna belong to that ink pad. So that whenever I want to use those colors, then I have an ink blending tool at hand ready to use. I really like these two colors together. That's super pretty. I think we need to come a little bit higher up with the abandoned coral, or not the abandoned coral, dried marigold. I love that peachy pink. That's such a pretty color in between there. Oh, I love this. Okay, I'm just a little bit higher here with the abandoned coral. And now, for my third color, I'm going to use picked raspberry. I'm just going to turn my craft mat around, and then I'll grab my post-it note and blend away. like this combination too. This is gorgeous. Wow. That's good. I think I'm going to stop right there. That looks so pretty. Super pretty. Okay. So here we have three beautiful backgrounds. One with a leftover ink. And I'm just going to quickly freeze you right here. This panel on the right hand side of the screen with the rainbow multicolor. What I did here was use the leftover ink on my silicone craft mat. I sprayed it with a little bit of water and tapped my cardstock on top of it to get this result. So then none of my ink goes to waste and uh, it's a super pretty rainbow background. Now I don't end up using it in today's video but I will save it for another day. And two with the beautiful foam domes from Ranger, super cool. Uh, now let's turn these into some cards. So these backgrounds are so vibrant and bright and I wanna make something pretty with them. So um, I'm gonna grab some dies and maybe die cut out some pretty little elements and uh, see what we've got. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have this Alta New dot background. I've never used this before, so I wonder yeah, actually that'll cut out a really nice looking panel. I think that'll be fun. Let's test this out and see what happens. I'll run this through my Gemini Junior die cutting machine and I'll be right back. So my background shifted, <laughs> uh, I guess because it was still wet and it stuck to my die cutting plate and uh, I'm kind of mad at myself about that. But it still turned out nice, super pretty. It is very messy. There are lots of little holes everywhere, but we still have a really nice background and I think we'll be able to do something cool with that. Let's set this aside. For the second background, I have this Alta New Doodle Lace background and we'll see what that looks like. I think that's gonna be pretty. Maybe this time I'll tape it. Maybe that will uh, be a smart thing to do. I think I'll tape this one. So I didn't tape it, but I think I need a new plate for my Gemini. This guy has seen better days. <laughs> okay, let's see what this looks like. Ooh, that's pretty. Wow, oh, I love that stitch detail. This is again another product that I had never used before and I'm kind of regretting it. That's gorgeous. Oh man, I love this. Okay, so let's turn these background into some cards. 
So I'm still um, on the fence about this one, but this one for sure, I know I want to put some layers of dimension in behind this panel. So I'm gonna cut out a few pieces of white cardstock to stack up behind this one. Okay, so finally got that done. I think the easiest way to adhere something with so many delicate lines is to use a spray adhesive. So that's what I'm going to do. To do this, I like to use my uh, Simons' stamp card kit boxes, and I'll, I'm gonna do these both at the same time, so that I only have to do this once. And I'm going to spray these die cuts generously with my Elmer's spray adhesive, but I'm not gonna do it near my camera. So I made a bit of an error. <laughs> I didn't think this through. I need to quickly get a card base to glue this on because I sprayed the adhesive on the back of one of the die cuts. So I'm going to stick them together first. We'll start there. And then I'm going to stick them down to the front of my card, and then I'll adhere my Distress Oxide panel. So this die is a perfect size for an A2 card front. It's four and a quarter by five and a half. So we'll get that pressed in, and I see something that shouldn't be there in the way. So the next thing I'm going to do is spray the back of my distressed panel with adhesive so I can glue down to the front of my card. So let's adhere this to the front of my card. And then I'm going to take something kind of heavy and set it down over top of this to give it some good pressure while we wait for everything to adhere. And now I need to work on this panel. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think I might have to chop it off so that it'll match evenly. And let's see if that does the trick. Oops. <laughs> I think that's good. All right. So I think for this one, I'd like to mat this on a piece of black cardstock. So I have a scrap of black cardstock here. I think that will help it sort of really be bold and dramatic. I like that. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to use some tape runner just because I'm lazy. I'm losing my daylight. So you might notice that my video might be getting a little bit darker. Okay, I'm gonna trim this down. Love that. All right, let's, uh, maybe this one I'm gonna pop up with some craft foam. Not too bad. There we go. All right. Let's have a peek at what we've got so far. That is not sticking there, so maybe I'll put some tape runner there and just cheat a bit. There we go. There we go. The problem is, is my bone folder is in another room. I am a complete crazy person and I craft everywhere I go. I craft in my office at work. I craft in my bedroom at nighttime while I'm everyone's sleeping, I craft while uh, in my craft room, <laughs> just pretty much anywhere. So I have a billion different projects on the go, as I mentioned to you before, and um, my bone folder is in my bedroom because I was working on some journals in my bed last night while I was watching YouTube. So anyways, there we go. Now we just need some sentiments for these beautiful cards. 
let's see what we can find. I like this one because I like the saying that says, you're in my thoughts and prayers. And the other one here says, I uh, hope you have a great birthday. I like the you're in my thoughts and prayers for this one. And then I like this one. I think I need to do something more dramatic for this one. Let's leave that. For sure, I like this one. Hope you're in my thoughts and prayers. So this is a Gina K Designs stamp set and it's called Spring Tulips. Super cute little set. I like the little sentiments and I'm going to show you a couple of tricks here. So I've got this little wobbly sentiment strip. Uh, I'm going to start by just dropping it and letting it like be. Let it take its natural shape, except I want it to be upright so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to let the stamp take its natural shape and I'm going to grab an acrylic block. So I have a nice long acrylic block for this. And what I want to do is make sure that my sentiment is straight. So I'm just going to turn it so it's kind of straight. And I'm going to use the grid lines on my stamping block to make sure that those line, those words are lined up. Now I do notice that some of the words are a little crooked. So I'm just going to straighten them out by hand. And I'm using the grid line on my block and I take the bottom of the letters and just line it up all the way across across the one line and then I know it's nice and straight okay so that's one trick the next tip that I have for you is a good ink you need a good crisp black ink to get nice sentiments especially when they're tiny so you need something nice and crisp so we need a nice ink the stamp to be straight, a good piece of cardstock. This is another Nina Classic Crest, solar white, 110 pounds. And my last little trick is my stamping mat. Now this would be the first time that I've used this in videos. This is something that you can pick up on my website. Um, this is just a rubber stamping mat and it has some um, grid lines on it so that you can be sure that you're positioning your things nice and straight and if you want to center a piece of cardstock and make sure that everything is lined up the way you want it things like that so these grid lines are there to help you um, they're available in all sorts of colors and uh, I'll leave a link in my description box down below where you can pick up one of your own stamping mats now the great thing about this is that it is a rubber mat and it will roll up and be super um, light and easy to travel so that you can get a great stamp on any surface so any sort of not the greatest surface this is going to help you so i'm going to take my cardstock and my versified ink and i'm going to ink up my sentiment nice and good i'll line up my cardstock on my grid and then i'm going to line my grid marks up with the grid marks on my and then i'm going to press down firmly but gentle and make sure that I get good transfer of that ink and there you go delicate little word and you have the perfect stamped impression I'm not sure if you can see that I love that that's super pretty okay so I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna pull in my trimmer because I want to get a nice straight sentiment strip so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up those words on the edge of my trimmer guide and then I'm just going to slice. Okay, and then I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to line up the top of those words to the edge of my trimmer guide and then I'm going to slice. And then I get a perfectly centered strip. And I'm going to position this sort of like here on my card, but I want to make some little fishtail banners. Let's get some scissors and do this. We need something small. So here I have some Tim Holtz uh, mini snips and I'm going to snip off the end of this because I think that's too long. And then I'm going to make a cut about a quarter of an inch down the center of this cardstock. And then I'll go from corner to corner so I'll cut in the corner of the cardstock down to the corner of my cut and just snip that away and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side I'm sure you've seen crafters do this a bazillion times and you get a perfect cute little banner I'm going to do the same thing to the other side 
and about a quarter of an inch in and then cut from corner to corner. There we go. That's really pretty. And I think I've kind of, yeah, I think I kind of like that there. And I have enough dimension, so I'm just going to tack this right down to my card front. If I can find my tape, there we go. So I'm going to tape this right to the front. This card is going to be for my good friend Reem, who lost her grandmother. Um, I'm sorry that you're going through tough times, Reem. If you watch this video, I love you, and this card is for you. Okay, there's my sentiment. Now, I think I'm just going to leave it. I think that's super pretty and crooked. <laughs> Let's try that again. There we go. All right, card number one done. So I need something. I need something. I don't even know what I need, but I need something. Let me go see what I've got in my die stash and see what I can come up with. Okay, so I came across this set of word dies. This is from Spellbinders. And I like the word that says awesome. I think that'll suit that nicely. So I'm going to cut that out of some white cardstock and I'll be right back. Okay, so I decided to make three die cuts because I think everything just looks better popped up. So I'm just going to push all my garbage off the camera so you can't see the mess that I have. Okay. And I'm going to glue these together. Um, I think I'm just going to go the lazy way. Don't judge, okay? <laughs> yeah, this is definitely the lazy way. Because the thing is, my glue tube's empty and I would have to go and get another glue tube and refill it because my other one is in my bedroom beside my nightstand with all of my other crafts. <laughs> I actually came right home from work today and I pretty much came to my craft room and I turned on the camera. I had an idea and actually I didn't have an idea. I had some inspiration because of those blending foams that came in the mail today and I wanted to try them out so bad so here we are and I thought well I'll just turn the camera on press record and do what I do best and start talking and uh, here we are with me talking to myself well I mean to you guys but everyone else in my house thinks I'm nuts because I'm in here talking to myself pretty much but I know you're listening aren't you Nobody else listens. <laughs> okay. Here we go. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. Okay, nice and thick. Almost like a piece of chipboard. Now one more time for the lazy tape way. And we'll get this adhered to the front of our card. You could even sort of round this a bit if you wanted, but I think I'm just going to go straight across the center of this card panel. Oh, I love that. Awesome. Okay, here we go. I think that's it. Um, it is almost 8 p.m. and Gina K Designs will be doing her live soon and I can't miss that. So I will edit this video later on and uh, take some good pictures and share it with you. Here's a close-up look at our first card with the, well, actually the second background, but the first card that we made. You're in my thoughts and prayers. And for this, I used Gina K Designs Spring Tulips in the Alta New Doodled Lace background die. And then we have the Alta New Dots. I think it's Doodle Dots background die with the Spellbinders Awesome super fun and also those amazing distress oxide inks really pack a punch with all this beautiful rainbow color i had a super fun time so thanks so much for spending some of your time with me here today i appreciate all of the support so coming up on screen are a couple of videos i think you may enjoy 
So check those out and uh, if you like this video, leave a comment down below, click the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Have yourself a lovely day and I will see you in the next one. Bye!